Rebecca Lopez's path to success has not been easy. She's always passionate about being an inspiration to the Latino community, but she first had to be able to inspire herself to get the courage to leave her 9 to 5 job and start her own company. My business partner and I both worked for a company and we provided developmental therapy services and we saw how high the need was for therapy. We saw the kids waiting six months to a year just to get services. So after a few drinks at a local restaurant, we decided, hey, we could do this way better than the owner and we can help out with the high need of children waiting. So that's when we decided to start our company. Rebecca is based in Arizona, and she's the owner and co-founder of Milestone Pediatrics, LLC. Her company serves children with disabilities. Milestone Pediatrics was established in 2009, and since then, the company has been growing consistently to the point of having 150 employees today. Let's talk to Rebecca and find out cómo lo hizo. Success. Success. Habitos. Habits. Habits. ¿Cómo lo hizo? How do they make it? How do they make it? Descubra las costumbres y secretos de los triunfadores. Discover the habits and the secrets of those who have succeeded. Rebecca López, thank you for being with us in Cómo lo hizo. Hi, thank you for inviting me. I really appreciate it. I'm really excited to talk to you. <laughs> Great. Likewise here. So tell me exactly what is what you do. So I'm the owner and founder of Milestone Pediatrics. We provide speech therapy, occupational therapy, music therapy to children with developmental disabilities. Some of those disabilities include Down syndrome and autism and CP and some sort of cognitive disabilities. Okay, so that's your business, right? Your corporation? Yes, correct. All right. Do you have a partner? Yes, I have a business partner um, that also assists with the running of the programs, and I handle the business operations of my company. So how did everything start? I mean, did you go to school? How did you went into this space? Well, my business partner and I both worked for a company, and we provided developmental therapy services, and we saw how high the need was for therapy. We saw the kids waiting six months to a year just to get services. So after a few drinks at a local restaurant, we decided, hey, we could do this way better than the owner, and we can help out with the high need of children waiting. So that's when we decided to start our company. I was 25 years old, and my business partner was 23. So we've owned a company for about 10 years now, and we have about 150 employees. That's amazing. In 10 years, 125, 150 employees, you said? Yeah, 150. Well, that's huge growth. How do you do it? How did you go from that bar, you know, having a drink, to where you are at this point? What's the secret? Oh, secret, it's a lot, a lot of patience and hard work. So there was a time where somebody applied to be a therapist, and they said, hey, my company's closing down, and there's six therapists out of work. So I said, all right, great, let's bring all of you on over. So I hired that entire company so with six therapists, and that's actually where we got our momentum and just started hiring massively after that. That was about five years ago when we started our therapy program, and 10 years ago we started our caregiving program. So how, how does your business model work? You have therapists. You, you, how do you get paid? How do you make money? So our primary payer source is, is the state, so it's a division of developmental disabilities. So if you have autism or Down syndrome, you can qualify for the state insurance called Arizona Long-Term Care, and you can get all these services for free. So it's not income-based. So you can be a millionaire and still be able to get these services. It just depends on your disability. So that's our primary payer source. And we recently reached out to regular insurance patients with Blue Cross Blue Shield, Aetna, or Cigna to be able to diversify our, our patients. That's so interesting because, yeah. I mean, you get paid by the state, basically, but you also provide a good service, you know, which is what I want to commend you because, I mean, business is good, money probably is good, but also you help other people and most of it children with disabilities, which, by the way, is a blessing. Yes, thank you. You know, so you went to school? 
Yes, I actually have a master's in business administration from the University of Arizona. And I actually just graduated in May. So before that, I also went to the University of Arizona, and I have a bachelor's in psychology and a, a minor in business administration. So the reason I decided to go back to school is because the decisions were getting so much harder at work, and um, there were just so many decisions to be made, and I knew I had to make them right to be able to grow the company. And I felt kind of trapped. I wasn't really going to trainings or getting educated, so I said, you know, I'm just going to try and get my master's degree to see if I can learn a lot more. So sure enough, it took me two years to get my master's degree, and it's probably one of the best decisions that I've ever made. They taught me so much about running businesses and entrepreneurship, so I'm really glad that I actually went through the program. So you did something that Warren Buffett said that, you know, it's great in investing yourself. Yes, absolutely. So how important, you said it was crucial, but expand a little bit more because, you know, sometimes we just want to do business and we don't want to even read a book about <laughs> how to operate a business. How important is it for you to get educated in business? Well, it's very important to me to try and run a successful company. However, you don't have to get a master's like I did. There's a lot of great resources out there. For example, we're members of the Tucson Hispanic Chamber of Commerce and also the Arizona Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. And they have such great trainings for uh, entrepreneurs, business owners, how to do QuickBooks, how to be a great leader. So it's also a really good avenue to get educated and being a business owner without getting a degree. So you actually went to school and you were able to turn what you learned into a business. Yes, absolutely. And I also, when I started my company, I was pregnant. I was in a recession oh. and going to school. <laughs> so you were in the economical recession, but in the body expansion. <laughs> you know, the reverse. That's it. <laughs> so I was reading your bio, and you said that you are passionate about being an inspiration for the Latino community. What do you mean by that? Oh, yes. I'm very inspired by the community, and they motivate me to do other things that I really wouldn't in, a, in my daily life. So what I do right now is I go to Nogales, Sonora, or to Obregón, Mexico, and take therapy materials to different schools with kids with disability. I do presentations. I show them how to use the therapy materials. And I also take them different books on disabilities. That way they have the same opportunity that we do here for our therapy services. I feel that um, during the time where our pyro was doing the redadas and all that here in Arizona, a lot of our clients and patients uh, were deported to Mexico. And that's actually what motivated me to be able to offer those same services on both sides of the border, regardless of the politics going on here in Arizona. Yeah, which are, you know, very divided at this point. I mean, yes. the country is amazingly divided. But anyways, going back to the business. So that night at the bar with your friend, you decided to jump into uh, and launch your own uh, business. Did you have the capital? How, where do you start with that? I'm going to tell you how I started, but I don't recommend it. <laughs> so at the time, I asked my boyfriend, I said, hey, you're, I want you to be my first investor. Is there any way you can let me borrow some money, and I'll pay you back once the business takes off? So my boyfriend at the time said, sure, I'll give you $2,000. So he gave me $2,000 to start the company, and that's actually how I started my company, just with 2000 bucks and a home office, and I was doing interviews at Starbucks. Luckily, he's now my husband. <laughs> oh, he, he turned to me. Probably he thought, no, I better keep with this girl because I am already investing in her. Yeah, she owes me some money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. So did you get a mentor also? Well, not technically, but I'm um, actually one of your guests on your show named Laura Oldacre. Right. I know who she is, and I met her about four years ago. And she doesn't know this, but she's my mentor. She, I really look up to her. She's taught me so many things in business. She's introduced me to so many people and great connections that I actually really look up to her, and I, I see her as my mentor. Interesting, because she is great. We had the pleasure of talking to her, and she's fire. I mean, oh, she's oh, yeah, amazing. She <laughs> so in your view, what's more important, having a mentor or being resilient in your will to achieve your goals? Mm, I think having a mentor, that way I can learn from their previous mistakes. I'm really big on learning other business owners' mistakes. That way you can teach me the lesson that they already learned. That way I can apply it differently to my business. So 
In 10 years, you went from two employees, you and your partner, to 150. What was this, the, the scaling process? It was very difficult because to have 150 employees, I mean, you need administration, you need logistics, you need workers' comps, you need all that stuff, isn't it? Yes, and actually in the beginning when that was happening, when we were scaling so big, I actually taught myself to be an HR director. I taught myself how to build our website. I taught myself how to do orientation. Everything that had to do with the company, I taught myself either watching YouTube videos or Googling, but I was able to do everything myself. So that didn't, that doesn't work for very long because we were scaling so big. So then I went and got an HR director, a supervisor, a manager, and I also stopped doing orientations and I gave that duty to the HR director. So without having additional people, it was really hard for me to grow. So once I started getting a leadership team together, I was able to scale a lot faster than I would by myself. So you had to learn to delegate. Yes, very important. That's very difficult huh, for a leader like you. Yes, I trust is very difficult for a business owner. Once you've been doing it for so long, you don't trust anybody to do anything else. And I actually had to let go of that to be able to grow because if I don't trust people, there's no way I can do everything on my own. Is that the most important experience probably in your in your field, in your business? I think so. I think delegating things to people and trusting people to grow your business because you can't do it alone. Which are the the most important qualities and behaviors an entrepreneur should try to achieve in order to succeed? I think it would be perseverance. You're going to fail so many times before you go on to the next phase in your career. And I tell business owners, like, it's okay to fail. You only learn from it. So I failed tons of times. It took me 18 no's just to get a state contract. Huh. And if I would have stopped on the fifth no, there's no way I would have grown to where I am today. So I'm really happy that I was able to overcome the failure and learn from those mistakes. So I think perseverance is a really good quality to have. Perseverance, but how do you... Okay, perseverance is very important. Now you have a failure, you have, you said, 18 no's, and that's perseverance. You go to the 19th, to the 20th, to whatever number. However, there should be something else to make you, you know, uh, race after a failure because, you know, sometimes we create our own failures and we stop and because, you know, it's just I did something wrong and that's it. I'm quitting. Well, for me personally, I think it had to come from my humble beginnings. So I remember going to the community food bank with my mom, getting uh, boxes of food for the family, and I knew I had to do something with my life because I wanted to take care of my parents once I got to be successful. So I knew that I had to be motivated to be able to do all of this. So if it, was, wouldn't for, it wouldn't have been for motivation, then I don't think I would have gotten this far. So you do have to have some of those qualities within you to be able to take all those failures and keep going and going. But I said, um, there's nothing that could be worse than what we went through as children. So just having a no, it's fine. 18 no's is fine for me. <laughs> yeah, it's part of life, huh? Yeah. So what's the mon most common mistake you see entrepreneurs make? Let's see. I feel like for me, when I didn't go with my gut feeling, it didn't turn out the way it's supposed to. So every time I make a decision, I have to also feel that it's a good decision and go with my gut for that's just for me. For some people, it may not work, but I feel like it has to be within me and a gut feeling to make it work. Yeah, it's a mix. No? And on top of that, you have to be knowledgeable because if you are ignorant of your trades, I mean, you're going to make more mistakes and that's going to be difficult to, to bear, correct? Yeah, absolutely. So tell me something that I was thinking while we were talking here. What's the right balance between... Family and business. Well, for me, ooh, that's a difficult one. <laughs> mm -hmm. So my husband is an engineer, but he works nine to five regular job hours, and he's very dedicated to helping me out with the kids. So if I have an event or a conference, he's able to get off of work and take care of the kids. So the balance for me would be having a really good support system, because I don't think if, if I didn't have a good support system for my husband, I probably wouldn't be able to do it. Also, my parents help me with the kids and um, also have a sitter that helps me out. But if it wouldn't have been for my support system, it'd be really difficult to succeed with my career and my business. So you have a whole supporting cast for your life. Yes, family mainly. 
<laughs> family. That, that's very important. It's difficult to, well, to do business with family. Business with family. Hmm. Yeah.